questions. All right, so today the four of us are going to do a complete end-to-end read-through of The Word at the World's End by Francis Brabazon. We've been meeting together weekly for about three months now, um, going over this with a fine-tooth comb. We read a couple of pages, then we go back and go over it line by line and look up references we don't understand and, uh, and discuss things we don't understand and, and so forth. So we've had a good thorough grounding in the poem, and we thought it would be nice to have an end-to-end read-through uh, for some of you who might want to just uh, listen to it that way. Um, so it'll just be the four of us uh, speaking, and the book is divided into five sections. Chris and Chris Barker and Rosalie Dunphy are going to read the first section, then Rainey Eastman Gannett and I, Greg Dunn, will read the second section, and then for the final three sections, we'll do a, uh, a four-person rotation where we'll just alternate every couple of pages. When we complete the reading, we have um, also a special treat for you. We have um, uh, a recording of some singers from uh, Australia. Was it the, did you call yourself the, what was, what did you call yourself, Rainy? The, the Wine Shop Singers. Ah, the Wine Shop Singers. I so, this, um, so Steve Saunders. Um, Sam, from Aust- Sam Saunders. I'm sorry. Sam Saunders, of course, from Australia, put the final section of this poem to music. Final section is called um, Hymn to God the Man. Sam put it to music, and the singers uh, have done a performance of it. And then Chris has made a beautiful slideshow with many wonderful pictures of Baba and Francis and so forth to go along with the music. So we'll start that playing it when we've uh, concluded doing the reading. We expect the reading to take about probably an hour and 15 minutes to go end to end in the poem. And then the um, slideshow runs about 25 minutes. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen, and then Rainey's going to introduce us to the book. J. Mayer Baba. The Word at World's End by Francis Brabazon. It was written from the 50s and then finalized in 1962, and then finally it was published by John F. Kennedy University Press of which in that ad they had to say, Word at World's End by Francis Brabazon, in five sections of diverse poetic style, Francis Brabazon relentlessly wields his caustic wit to peel away the last veils covering our dying civilization. This book couples unparalleled imagery with a stunning honesty as penetrating gaze to the art, the religion. I'll just read that again in case some of it was missing. This is by the publisher, John F. Kennedy University Press. In five sections of diverse poetic style, Francis Brabazon relentlessly wields his caustic wit to peel away the last veils covering our dying civilization. This book couples unparalleled imagery with a stunning honesty as the author turns his penetrating gaze to the art, the religion, and the everyday life of man on this planet today. The word at world's end will in centuries future stand as the most eloquent document of the death rattle of the contemporary spiritual wasteland. Yet the book is Phoenix also, sowing the seeds of the new humanity amidst the ruins of cadaverous illusions. Okay. There's the cover. and the contents. So this uh, is poem, uh, this book, as Greg said, is divided into uh, five poems. The first is a dream of wet pavements, then elegy for the young poets, 
Ballad of the Rhyming Night, After the Flood, and Hymn to God the Man. And we move on to the preface. And uh, with today's preoccupation with mere sound relations of words and poetry, my work, this is Francis Brabazon writing, my work has drawn the criticism that it lacks craft. Yet I do not think that there are many writers who work harder at the craft of poetry than I do. In fact, most writers, whether avant-garde or uh, pop, only have to satisfy a public which has been carefully conditioned by every gimmick the genius of publicity can invent. But for years now, I have had to satisfy God and not the God who is dead uh, or who changes his face according to theological expediency and political necessity, but the God who is God man, the beautiful person who is the beloved of all who do not live for bread alone, who is so alive that all other persons are shadows emerging from the limbo of consciousness for the moment of a gesture or cry. And I'll pass it on to Rosalie. You have to unmute. But I have always considered that the real craftsmanship is in the shaping of the initial idea, not in the mere sounds of the words used. So I have infinitely crafted my ideas before beginning to write. And in my best work, the idea forged its own form of expression. In Stay With God, the opening line came to me 12 years before I wrote that book. And it was not an odd line jotted down and forgotten. I carried it with me, noting its possibilities and acquiring the material it would need. The word at world's end began with a short poem written and published in the London Magazine in 1954. The possibilities of its development and extension were apparent, and six years later, I began making notes on it. Some 200 pages of them, including some 50 formal sonnets as a preparation for After the Flood. When I began the actual book, it went very quickly. The elegy, for instance, was finished in two sittings. The concept that the idea is the main thing, the reason for a poem is as old as poetry itself. And it has always been the basis of the greatest work. The sound theory is a recent one a natural rationalization of the state into which poetry has fallen. Poets on the whole, not having the firm ground of a knowledge of the divine truths of creation upon which to stand and serve with their art, must necessarily occupy themselves exploring sound combinations. Yet I feel that the word at World's End does provide interesting sound patterns and I have paid considerable attention to structural variety. These things have their importance. They give charm to the truth of the idea. They beguile the mind into accepting what the heart knows. They make entertainment. And to entertain the beloved is the only valid reason for a poem but he is never entertained unless the original idea is shaped in his shape. A dream of wet pavements. I sing within a night that's lent to soap and axes to invent new slaughters of the innocent, where patient rats 
gnaw tired cement. A night song and a dreadful night, batteried by the fluorescent might of strident trumpets and affright, bellowing bitchery's delight, which wet pavements shape into dreams that softly sigh, there's more than seems. Behind the fret, beneath the screams, there flow perennial love streams. In this night, which neon makes day, the easy speakmen are raking hay for big fist who doze in their pay and nubile girls sing around the lay. To men in shirt sleeves, each alone, gnawing his flesh down to the bone, the evening is a stifled groan of the day's rasping monotone. And gazing at the ghastly glow, of neon's blood and silent flow, their spasms and their twitchings grow, knowing the cocks will surely crow. And youth in theaters, row on row, sit cheek to cheek and glow to glow, fearing the crop that love may sow, which they with teeth will have to hoe. And smoldering bosoms, bezeared snow, shines with a phosphorescent glow, hiding breast bruises that would know why joy goes quick and night so slow. Each bust is a hammer in the brain of each prisoner on his chain, on whose lips words are made profane, the acts of which love's laws maintain. In the sophisticated light of plush caves, Vocalists recite in strangled tones the bed's delight. The red cocks range themselves for fight. The cocks crow red, the red cocks crow. A hair divides high note from low. Man hair, girl hair, united know the magic of electric flow. The wind sighs round tall mod con huts. A door opens and smiles and shuts. Foreign fingers and thighs score ruts. The dawn peeps over trays of butts. Nightmare refreshed, we rise from bed. Tighten the new loose screws in our head. Breakfast on sawdust and liquid lead instead of fresh plain fashioned bread. The news headlines run, kingdom come for the poor. The always with you dumb. New expressway plows through slum. Man dies through drinking office gum. Girl galled at man's two timing, cuts through his refrigerator guts with oxy torch, pleads. He drove me nuts, adding he always pulled his putts. Diplomat says that rival ghouls patch the pitch his cunning cruels. Wife, mistress, both or either, sools him on to pinch the crown jewels. New restaurant serves kids from schools to savor with contract renewals. Bones, hair, and nails are used in gruels. Astronauts eat only solid fuels. The Harbor Trust extends the mole so ships can quietly rock and roll. Old generals march out on parole while taxis honk and fire bells toll. The leader claims parliamentary guesses have spiraled prices of women's dresses and slowed down trains that were expresses and fed the fires of youth's excesses. Then 
corseted in two-way stretch, in trousers honed to razor edge, by bus, train, car, the city reach, to join Harry once more to the breach. Maiden walls of financial freeze to release a fresh economic breeze and that typists on electric keys may make reports on nylon knees. The lift takes up a beribboned clown crutching, clutching democracy, democracy's new crown of smiling days without a frown. The ex-president rides it down. The new the new head mouths he will now decline, mouths for his tongue he gave to spline the wheels of the production line, aggression's nouns through history's line. He mouths and farts most wondrously, and all agree, what oratory? At last, we grasp that liberty is the true object of shall be. Beneath the white electric glare of glass eyes sweat from startled stare, nonchalant gladiators tear to shreds frail mask of teeth and hair. Thieves with all the delicate graces of shaven chins and double faces are brought back from minor disgraces to occupy the highest places. The great financiers and their, be and their priests the special agents of the beast, he reaps the most who toils the least, drink vintage virtue at their feasts. From the tallest building summit, big fists con men lean to plummet, then straighten up, report in vomit. The truth is what you deduct from it. Day shift, night shift, the robots toil on simple diet of crude oil. No salads, therefore no night soil. Their eyes are ice through their blood may boil. Slide rules and spanners are all they need to keep them at the required speed. They are indeed a patient breed produced from a synthetic seed. And neon sun keeps night turn day for easy speak men to rake the hay and geared fornicators grind away and bud breasted girls sing a rondelay. And in wet pavements, fitful gleams telling of love's perennial streams, lovers discussing hems and scenes, discern fulfillment of their dreams. Then home, sweet home again at night, in car, bus, train, packed sardine tight, for non-breakage and the delight of togetherness, in the same plight. Home to a mansion wide and fair, suburban house with grass and air, or climb a back street creaking stair to a narrow bed and lonely chair. Dinner of bones and bakelite, or just a little smoldering spite, while those with fragile appetite prefer eggs fried in gelagite. But some thrive on boiled cans with beans. Some leather spread with pickled spleens. Others eat only TV screens, depending on their craze and means. For those who need an appetizer with taste control and realizer, the recipes from our first prizer, molasses mixed with fertilizer. 
The evening streets are spinning wheels. The pavements are gyrating girls. The mayor wearing stiletto heels coyly conducts the dance of seals. Small shopkeepers and laborites swing from the lines of colored lights and bankers from the building's heights hang down in bat-like stalactites. Children blowing 10 cent whistles shoot through the crowd like flying missiles and every vantage point bristles with columnists typing their epistles. The latest supersonic planes scream through nerves to terminal brains and massed brass bands and honeyed strains announce technology's latest gains. Big fist con men puff-cheeked, slit-eyed as swine and sty, have multiplied beyond pig comfort. They trot slide in the cool evening in their pride. Pink snouts held high like flags, they glide so smoothly and so satisfied, and bow and smile as they trot slide, grunt greetings that are grunt replied that swine knowledge be verified, manhood, womanhood, they've denied. Spirits fair form have stultified, hoard science, bright mind stupefied. The poet laureate, they decide, shall be he who has best supplied them with their grunts, squeals, versified, in meters matching their short stride. Some astronauts ply chimps from space with booze to win their word of grace regarding the right gear and pace for cornering in the Sputnik race. Singly, the lionesses walk, gazelles their eyes and doves their talk. Nothing can hinder them nor balk. The slaughter of the game may stop. Upon the polished plain each goes, determinedly poised on her toes, led by the gentle breeze that blows, the thread of scent hooked in her nose. They walk aloof in rhythm trance, as priestesses in a phallic dance. The quarry is the junk in the jungle giants. They do not leave success to chance. They stalk the polished evening plains, gazelles their eyes, foxes their brains. Their talk is like soft summer rains. They swing their hips and lash their trains. Decapitated close up heads sing arias from the watersheds of roofs, torsos, and chromium sleds ride down the night of snowy beds. And high above the city square, stainless steel angels debonair chant, all in war and love in spare, humming for chorus the Lord's Prayer. We stare through the electric haze by which neon turns nights to days at silver shapes singing rondelays. The speak men know which line best pays. They speak us freedom, freedom to blink at a chromium kitchen sink, to sleep alone on the Cold War brink while space suits copulate with mink. Freedom to listen to the fear that curls about a tender ear, stitching two eyelids with one tear, bruising bright lips with stone despair. They tell us that the world is real so long as we keep the price of steel and know that success derives from spiel and gloved hand marries iron heel.
So long as we believe a star is somewhere else than where we are, that happiness depends on tar and soul is in a chemist's jar. By all who are sophisticated, soul, God, and virtue are downrated and replaced by an elongated far view that is with space equated. Progress is God, the speakmen say, girls croon it in a round delay, that we will all keep on and pay, big fist, his price for our better day, the day of better, greater things, when the poor have more than ancient kings and the rich may have a pair of wings to, to a star that ever manward sings. They tell us, yes, behind the fret of drills and scream of turbojet, freedom and truth will surely get within the diamonds of our sweat, within the rubies of our blood, within the opals of the flood of tears that in the night are shed, within these is our highest good. Big Fist may lead us by the nose and belt us on with freedom's blows, but still within each heart love flows and streptophonic undertoes. For every heart within it bears a virgin soul untouched by fears of being laid off and rent arrears, a pristine self unstained by tears. Beneath all this, which is or seems, behind the crude electric screams, which wet pavements shape into dreams, self floweth in perennial streams. Separate, though mingled in accord, a four-part fugue of the great word, guarded by an angel with a flaming sword, which only the pure in heart have heard. It flows on through our lives and glows in textures of the themes we choose, when from primeval swamps we rose manward under evolution's blows. It flows on ever to compose new tish tissue, which we then transpose into acts of poetry and prose and dissolve at last in a full close. Rosie, you're muted. Back up and start over. From home arrival till late at night, screams, flashes, purrs for hearing, sight, the ad word on electric flight to keep and whet our appetite. Guffawing asininities drip from TV screens like hot cheese and round the children's beds like fleas hop singing obscene litanies. For teenagers, the one mass ear tuned to the drool of sex and fear, supported by the grin and leer, an eye that drops a plastic tear. And on wide screens, gunmen and mall, the wide romantic life extol. And Hips rotate and bellies roll. For these, the kids pay big fists toll. Oh, little gears and little sprockets of the machine mind has built to mock its divinity. You make the rockets to tear your young limbs from their sockets. And because sometimes in despair, you pad the night to kill the fear. The speak men with a solemn air, delinquencies upsurge declare. Kids 
who will sing your threnody, the wrong of surplus energy. Even though on earth none is born free, but God man on his Calvary. The speak men urge the wide long view. Together we will make it new, a brave new world for me and you, togetherly in one big stew. Togetherly, yet each one free in enterprise, togetherly in a controlled equality, homogenized security, togetherly suspended float, togetherly laugh, cry, emote, togetherly hope, pray, by rote, and all the children have a vote. Together, but no fixed relation, a vacuum-packed hygienic nation in static self-evaluation, and clothed and fed by automation. Togetherly so bright, so glad, at 60 aping what 20 had. Each a coy lass or coming lad in zestful pursuit of each fad. Togetherly alone, the sad unfamilied old, the might have had, but big beasts prowl and small ones pad behind the wide smile of the ad. God, numb our minds and stop the pain of loneliness. Peace, like soft rain, fall and wash away the rubbed in stain. Tomorrow, we must march again. We pray for one night free from huddles of ad men and soap opera bubbles, from writhing hips and obscene cuddles and pools of sentimental puddles, from polished nails and sawdust soles, delineating future goals, from bulls and bears playing at bowls, because it is our head that rolls. From bribery, backslap, book, boot lick, from con man smooth talk, and from slick diplomacy and politics, backed by, of course, the nuclear stick. One night from pacts and treaties, scribble, from quasi-intellectual quibble, from foam wash of idiots dribble, praising progress, the sluttish sibble. A one-tune phrase high, low and middle, played on a polyphonic fiddle, while women dream over backyard griddle, and men fence stand, moon gaze and piddle. All through the night trains crammed with goods, bearing instructions and new shoulds. Trundle and hyenas from the woods prompt further must and if I coulds. All day, all night, dear God does wait, watching the bubble on his plate grow to its proper size and date, and with pen in hand, compassionate. I close my song. The night is spent where patient rats gnawed tired cement, and virgin veils were rudely rent, and axes slew the innocent, from which the speakman made much hay, while buds of girls sang the roundelay, the wide smile for the better day, the line that Big Fist knew would pay. A night song in an iron night, now sicklied over with the light of broken trumpets, desperate flight that once blazed with fluorescent might. From which wet pavements shaped dim dreams that whispered, there is more than seems. 
Behind, beneath our fitful gleams, there flow perennial love streams. A dawn breaks for us on a high plateau beneath a cold glass sky where even vultures do not fly to roam like beasts with wordless cry. The emptiness is a steel vice which holds us till we pay the price our lives have fixed. Across our heart's ice, God man stumbles with his huge cross. Section two, Elegy for the Young Poets. The young poets go by, on coral feet they go, so cruelly slow, searching the corners of their eyes for definitions, searching for freedom amongst the prohibitions greeting vague recognitions, not yet having learnt to listen to their heart's tone. For the meaning of things is in that word alone, which was sown in the heart when the word first escaped from God's lips. They would give us gold, they who are cargoless ships. How long so? Time slips stealthily, unheard by the ferment of the yeast. Through the swamps in the night ranges and roars the beast. Godman, the greatest, the least, suffers and supports the world in the palm of his pain. None thrives on song. Lives are fattened for gain, grain grown and ripened only for the mills of big fist. Brain and muscle, love and fair speech, all to him are grist. But the wind of God blows where it lists, and big fist and his satraps will bow before its storm. Do not mind, sweet God, that none now knows your form. Remember the warm welcome we once gave you and took you in from the heat of burning midday and gave you the honored seat and washed your feet and set before you our choicest meat and wine. Forgive us our definitions and redefine our volume and line. Give us bright hope and gladden us with surprise. On antenna, the big fist pokes up into the skies. The young poets have hurt their eyes. They listen for the voice of the dawn, but hear only the brute trampling the night and devouring the fruit. Can a flute give out music when the player's lips are sealed? Can a harvest come from an unplowed, unsown field? Can a cow yield sweet milk that was never bestridden by a bull? Can a man come to knowledge who has not been to school in Lover's Lane, who is full of violent purposes and leached by distrust? Can a stone become a garden without first being dust? Or wheat attacked by rust grow into a golden sea bearing lives unafraid? The young poets are brave. They would steer where none has steered until he has heard the bell of his heart give out its resonant reasons. Each cat walks the pavement of his night, cognizing treasons, notes the seasons of politics and fashions in art and women's dress. They hum tunes in modalities that each time regress and will not express the malefic, the malefic mutations within their head. 
So one told us the next morning when we found him dead and took him home to bed, where he fingered lightly the textured quilt of the dream, which was one within the waters that the light moved upon, the stream of unreal things which seem real, real eyes, real hands, and white breast lit by a rose. The stream of conditioned consciousness which ever flows, nourishing the world that glows upon the screen of mind as from a projector. A film in which, in which each of us writes his part and is actor and editor who permits a happy close or ends it in a sob. And each is the audience that pays five bob and says, not a bad job. The lighting was good. Action could have been faster. So millions of lives, <clears throat> birth, the hope, death, the blaster. Until one meets the perfect master, him before whom death sulks and young love skips like a fawn, who lays out each night for his walking a star-splashed lawn, who pinches dawn's cheek so that her shy rosy face welcomes the sun, who is the source and the song and the goal of each one, and one's journey is done and one becomes at his feet living and singing dust. One by one, the young poets ride up in the lift for a crust from Big Fist. His lust satisfied, they are put on the payroll and retained. In the night, the stars went out and hope, and it rained and everything was stained with blood. In vain, we waited for the morning's brightness. Presently, God will cover the earth with whiteness. Then the young poets will write poems about snow, as the Japanese did long ago. Big Fist rules the city, which of bones he has built with blood and river silt, to stick them together, best ready mixed mortar. He spawned his children to the tune of slaughter, his eldest daughter he married to his chief architect, then to his builder, who lay with her while hammers and rock drills held her in terror, then sold her to the keeper of pornographic appliances, who arranges all diplomatic alliances during closed door seances with a trollop as medium whelped by a bitch. Round the city runs the deep wide sewerage ditch which boils at night like pitch. Beyond this lie the marble and slate golf courses. A sullen sea gnaws at the doorsteps of houses. Its foam of white blouses is used as milk for infants and in cups of tea. I would so much like to discuss philosophy under a tree for just once Aristotle's good life to savour. But far across the turmoil of the traffic's labour lives my next door neighbour. How can I reach him across the huge vacant days? I ring him on the phone that's connected at the maze. At last, a girl's voice says, what number are you trying to get? The voice is kind. The woman's eyes are flowers troubled by the wind, searching to find they are flowers that have no sun in their stars. They bend down and are drowned in the waters. God, have you nothing for your daughters? Wrong number? What number are you trying to get? 
a man's voice says, get off the line, mug. I would have liked, yet it's too late to regret. What was it now that I wanted to tell my friend? The geophysical year promised to send warning of world's end, but how to avoid the ice? I cannot find the stairs. The ostriches bury their heads in sand in pairs. The wheels turn at the fairs. The young poets grope along the pavement for their eyes. What the mouth proclaims, the curtained ear denies. It is late, but one tries to understand to sift some wheat grains from the sand. The young poets prepare to submit their demand. They mooch around and stand and sit and stare at tables in coffee lounges. At football, or maybe it's chess, white socks trounces black feet. A bum scrounges the price of a meal for a couple of pots of beer. Everywhere grow crosses of little fear. For all must appear loyal to the big fist or rot in a prison camp. The swans fly over, each one carrying a lamp to light the swamp on which the city rests on synthetic rubber posts. Big fist confers with his staff of brass hatted ghosts. He boasts, he will dominate the world and then the planets. The robots making the armaments groan and sweat. Big Fist's mother quietly frets. She says at her age, it's too far to go to the moon. Big Fist has long forgotten his childhood's bright balloon and its careless tune. And no one has told him that the stars shine is stars stare manwards. Forgotten to the sad story of Attila Khan's horde. He burnt the records and of Napoleon's army on the pitiless plain. His telescopes are trained on the starry terrain. His electronic brain computes figures of spelt auris through rose mist of power. The young poets are hopeful. They await their hour. From a conning tower, they are watching closely the scene while Big Fist gloats. On the mountains, the young goat herds pasture their goats. The heroine emotes as the hero drowns the villain in a soup tureen. The film goes on unwinding on the silver screen. That's life, what is seen. We come out into the night and say, a good, a poor show. I wonder, has my friend got home yet? How slowly the hours go. I would so like to visit him if he's at home. The cock smooths his feathers with his bright red comb. The Shastris chant Om as they climb the high mountain to Siva's abode. They painfully traverse under learning's great load. For there's no road to God except in the dust at the master's feet. At any time now, we may meet world's end in our street. The young poets greet one another peeping shyly through their buttonholes. The young poets are very earnest about their souls and their goals. They sharpen their intellects on French polished boards. Without heart's tune, one can only make pictures with words. And time affords no release to the shining song way. God man walks the earth preparing another day. Our love is his pay. 
he goes the long, weary road carrying his cross. Time audits our balance sheet of profit and loss, checks net against gross. How will we stand when on the screen flashes the end? I hope everything is all right with my friend. I would send him a letter, but my writing paper is spoiled. Soon will the glorious banner of God man be unfurled over the whole world. My heart stands firm, though in the waters my mind is swirled. The people, yes. But science has betrayed the people and God is merely a steeple of a church where a priest thumbs through his brief. The young poets have not been trained to carry burdens of grief. They seek relief in every new twist of thought and feathered theory. Time counts down to the hour, to the zero of bankruptcy. Gut God democracy discusses peace with the brain spattered communist heel. The armies of big fists march out like spokes in a wheel crying, punch a shield, punch a shield. Big Fist's mother quietly broods and wonders and frets. The swan of Manasarawar has been shot down by fighter jets. Big Fist regrets and orders Holy Kailas to be encircled with guns. As spokes from a hub march out the columns of both Huns, so the film runs. The photography was good, the direction poor. The young poets cannot stand it. They beat on the door of culture's store. Their nails score the marble walls as they sink with a cry to the ground. Be brave, young lovers. The film is nearly unwound. Soon will the primal sound burst in your hearts as a thousand petaled flower. Soon will God man in his infinite power assert his hour, for now with the veil of the world's pain, he has covered his face. The stars whirl age after age towards man. Men race for the first star place. The apocalyptic horsemen set feet to stirrups. The authorities increase per head the cups of tension ease syrups. There are new brands called quick rest and down thistle. They have developed a new weapon, a missile powered by brain cells and gristle. Two way. It kills before it's fired and kills where it lands. Big Fist has taken, taken to doing somersaults and headstands to renew his glands. The young poets study metaphor and illusion. Man has become a sickness, a hemorrhoidal protrusion of himself. Godman enters seclusion. He must suffer for us the full sum of our violence. Naked within each heart, bearing all the pain and defilements, he stands in his perfect silence. His sweat is upon his body as a million lashes. Something splashes on my hand. I look up. The night is a cave through which the moon races. The Ballad of the Rhyming Night.
The knight on draft horse rides for lass through desert, jungle and mount mountain pass. He's very bold, but young, alas. Jesus goes bare back on an ass. The knight goes by in shining mail, Shireen milks camel into pale. The hermit recites love's sad tale. Muhammad meets the stony hail. The knight clops by in jingling steel. Yang Kui Fei, her own pot shall keel. The boatman pays out line from real. Confucius plans the commonweal. The knight trots by in army, armor bright. The yogi's mat is snow, pure white. He dries three wet sheets in one night. The Buddha preaches men's birthright. The knight rides very earnestly to slay the bad men. One, two, three. Milkmaids, the fairest in the country, dance with Krishna beneath a tree. William lands at Hastings town. Harold with arrow in eye is down. The referee counts verb with noun and Joe Lewis retains the crown. Columbus sails west to come east, but Erickson L got there first. Psychologists have taped the beast. Desire for life is Trishnan, thirst. The sower keeps going out to sow, a crop that tax, not he shall mow. They drive cars fast, but Fangio scooped five years Grand Prix in a row. The knight fears not the tyrant's nod. The boatman casts the hook with rod. The plowman turns the shining sod. Shankara says, Atman is God. The knight says, scowling, by my word, you'll not, dog face one, have reward of breezes fair one in maraud. Athene soothes him with winged word. The knight falls backward on the sword, sward, spitted upon the false knight's sword. The ladies say, forsooth, good lord. The prince yawns, I am ghastly bored. The knight starts up and shakes his locks, stares wildly round, pulls up his socks and prepares again for battle shocks. The maidens smile and smooth their frocks. Ticker tape measures heroes' stocks. The hens submit to lust of cocks. The prodigal, shit to the hawks, tramps home to homestead vines and flocks. The rain still falls in sunny Spain. The matador, with grace, with pain, slays with his sword his love again. John sleeps midst lilies without stain. The axeman fells, the axeman fells the shady tree. Men search for oil beneath the sea to feed the god prosperity. St. Francis marries poverty. The poet fills another page with love, with doubt, or merely rage. Godman prepares to come on stage and sing salvation for this age. Zathost says, right thought, deed, word. The knight's stout horse stamps through the ford. He rides for lady, not for lord. Her hair binds him with a silken cord. The knight rides on with rhymed lay. On lips for lips are all his pay. Two lips, two eyes, hair like mown hay, and breasts as fleece on shearing day. He rides and sings and hobble chains jingle along the leafy lanes. He rides for love, and love 
restrains. Panchakosh subtract, Atman remains. He rides and rhymes and sings his say to Arbid Lady. He sings when they shall meet in bed to love and pray. The night is not far from the way. After the flood. After the flood of our desolation and the twisted steel and the broken concrete, after the flood of grace of God man's word in our hearts and our hearts and the face of the earth had been washed clean of stain and monuments, those of us who remained after the fall of the cities and survived the wandering came together in silence in an open place in a new morning, empty but for the sun. Newly risen out of the ocean. And one found voice for all of us. We have to admit, God, that you did the right thing. We had become loused up. A man's word had the stink, but not the weight of his turd. We had forgotten, every son of a bitch of us, how to sing. What is a man until he has been drowned and has ris risen again from the flood of you with a river of song in his mouth, has found his own shape in the image of the blood of you. In everything we had been wrong, we did not believe that God man was your face, that in his word was the total grace, already present in the creation song. We had lost the gift of high decision. We conceived that tomorrow was merely today's revision. Yet we were troubled at times when we saw the new moon, when we heard certain old songs. At times our pain was like trembling drops of rain, but when we tried to praise you, our words were as foolish as drunken trumpets. We could not make one small song in the shape of your beauty. The days sprawled and heaved like swollen seas against rocks. They grieved like superannuated clocks. They were ashamed as paternal cocks, lust spent and lust deceived. Alarmed as power bosses who have achieved those progresses which the bed mocks. Time tyrannized the days, and you, God, suffered the chain and the iron beak, total man pain. Suffered and synchronized man time and God time again by men to be realized. The words of the word your gift to men, the words that are a flame in the mouth to illumine your name, that name which the stars were singing as we, your sons, danced past them on our way to man state. Our cities were hills that drew no rain, from which no virtue flowed out over earth sustaining structure and flowering that mirth which makes eyes dance across a surging plain. Our cities were coagulated again, the good life thrown on a garbage dump, thin love hung up on nerves like bits of tin in winds of belly laughs of the insane. Our cities were maps with squares marked treasure for which one dug and found a rotten bone. 
dial wrong numbers on a telephone, markets where one shopped for packaged pleasure, back home unwrapped it and found only pain, untouched by hand and wrapped in cellophane. Your creation song sang the stars into praises and earth into place for man singing. But our speech ooze had spread a film over the earth and only the flood of our cry, the flood of your word could make it clean again. We sounded seas, drilled rock, stared snow wastes where nothing moved but the wind. We gave ear to progress prophecies, but private plenty reared new public squalor. Fear chasing the blood through the ventricles of heart became the best attended wagered sport. And the great dream a journey to a star to find ourselves already there, still forever in a state of war. Dreams, horizons, a new sun in a black space. Tomorrow, always tomorrow, but the tomorrow of anger is ash and the tomorrow of hatred is death. The days were hummings by a boy with a stick along a sultry summer corrugated iron fence, orchestrally inflated with episodal matter, suave and slick. We lived in the end days, sick, mauled by mathematics, irritated by ever-growing burdens that were rated gain, the gain from turning living bread to brick. We knew it was all a dirty trick played on us by Big Fist and those who licked his shoes. So, but his number one sidekick was our unlove. We for ourselves baited the rat traps of cities and arranged for our souls to be crated, leaving fair earth for the men she long had waited. We were men with broken feet on betrayed journeys, alone in companies under a cold glass sky. Wordless like that of beasts was our cry into the last days of the great heart freeze. Always alone, always in companies, through narrow ravines on a high plateau where vultures did not fly and even scorpions found dis-ease. Ever we went on, fattening our miseries on cropped concrete and dim remembrances of the sun and the breeze billowing tall grass, longing to die. At last we began to understand the seas below us on the plains were your weeping for our cry. And world's end was suddenly lit by your compassionate eye. And we heard in our hearts the bursting of your infinite word, the same primal word which stirred in the womb of the great dark and one spark of which issued as all the blazing suns in which were hidden earth and the seed of men, the to be perfect ones, and the wind of your word dried up the flood you had wept, leaving clean the face of the earth of the monuments of our boasts reared on cruel labor. We have come down, God, from the separation into this silent morning to begin a new day in the sun, to sing a new song to you, to continue the earth for our children.
him to God the man. Beloved God, all the earth is singing you. In the impermanent materials of stone, leaf, and heart. Singing you, yearning, leaning towards your reaping. God, the Father, the Son of yourself. Whole God, perfect man. Cherisher of the sap in all things. Destroyer of the worn out, the faults of all things. Releaser of the love in all things, which locked in the prison of heart in leaf and stone, raises itself in longing towards your reaping. You are the perennial and glorious avatar, the human and lovely Rasul, the sudden and beautiful Christ who stoops to man state and walks the earth carrying the cross of our violences, of our little stupidities of progress to other than God, our own perfect self state. For we have ever turned from that which we most passionately desired and hated that which we most dearly loved, carrying your cross, talking intimately with your disciples as their brother, teaching them, nourishing them as their master, cracking a joke as you pause to wipe the sweat from your lovely forehead. God man, whole God, perfect man to us now, and to the cavemen in remote prehistory, full of love for you. Knowing your voice in the waters, in the fire and the wind. And before this, to civilizations, to cavemen, to civilizations, millions of times back to the time of your creating man and earth and the universe out of your whim of self-knowing, spanning the immensity of time in one moment of your perfect manhood. Ever beloved, would we be eagles of praise to you. Ever are we dust trying to sing your glory. How beautiful you are. What a dreaming in the dawn is your brow. What oceans of love are your eyes. What music of our new singing is in your throat. What a proud new architecture is in your hands. How perfectly shaped are your feet for our beyond journeying. The symmetry of your body is the assurance of our well being. You are the song of all singers who have ever sung. You are the tenderness of lovers of all time. The line of your mouth is the direction of our journey. The curve of your cheek is the contour of our containment. In your fingers is the cunning of all the works we shall make. In your eyes, the love of all our loving. How marvelous was your creating. From the thread of nothingness you wove the vast universe, and this little earth and man, all because you did not know who you were and had the whim to know yourself as whole God, as perfect man. Out of absolutely nothing, this seeming something contained within your everything. Oh, 
the long way from the stars first singing, the long pain from the time you broke out of your imprisonment of stone and crept up age after age to man state. Yourself, your own image of you, perfectly sculptured, articulated for self-knowing. Your ear eager for your voice, your eye for sight of you. How dense you were in hard denseness, stone locked in your dreams of yourself as stone. How tree-rooted you became, thrusting upwards, spreading out gropingly towards your infinity. How feeble you were as worm, how silently you glided through swamps, through the grass as serpent, seeking yourself. And as lizard scurried and stretched yourself in the sun, how you fish swam in the shallow waters seeking yourself, dived down deep in your ocean, scaled waterfalls seeking yourself in the highest waters, how as animal you longed in animal longing for yourself, crashing out of the jungle, trumpeting like the rising sun, howling across frozen steps, crying in fox cry like a child in distress in the night, bull bellowed, bull staring into the sunset, pawing the earth, longing intensely for yourself. Proudly over plains, Lord of the world, stealthily at night through silent forests, suddenly alive, and then stood up, beating your breast, unable to endure not being man. Then you became man, and how great was your fall. You had hammered out on the anvil of time, your true shape, by means of which you could know who you were. But you forgot all about the long way and the long pain and why you had had the fortitude to endure it. You dithered about digging in the earth, examining what you found, stared at stars, wondering, beguiled by what you had already been, made wars, instead of war on yourself, always conquering, conquering, but not your own nature. What a gainsaying of the long way and the long pain. But eventually you turned and took your stand in the puzzle and seed of yourself and became your own hero and fought your way out of the tangle of flesh and the drift of stars, found out the backward path that leads forward to self across the terrible shining planes of your own energy and its allurements and enchantments, stormed mind, destroyed mind and its delusion of other than self. Prove the seeming of everything to be nothing, nothing but your dream of other than yourself, and became yourself whole God, and returned to earth as perfect man, and taught us the law and the love and the way to self, to truth. Millions of times in your compassion you have come to us borne the cross of our rejection and violence and waited with vast patience the extent of our folly, of our little greeds and progress to other than self. And now again, you have walked the earth, but as the moment of your glory drew near, the talk with your disciples died on your lips and the swift glances fled from your eyes. Your brow was a sea of concrete in which no green thing lived. 
Your body was all the steel of the world made into a cross on which you hung and waited. The eternity of the precise moment of your word, which was our destroying and renewal and the again path for our stubborn feet. How the glory of your brow is the light of our self journey. The love of your eyes is the mirror of our revealment and the certainty of our arrival. How glorious you are as man, how helpless as God, so helpless that you could not hide your godhood even behind the walls of your pain. How very man you are, how absolutely God. Jay Baba. So that concludes our reading of the uh, Word of World's End. The last poem was Hymn to God the Man. And uh, in 2005, some of the Australian singers who call this, some, themselves the wine shop singers recorded a version of this with music by Sam Saunders. And uh, so we are going to hear that right now. Greg is going to share the screen and we're going to see a photo montage of beautiful pictures of Baba. And Greg, you need to start it at the beginning. I think you're halfway through. There we go. Beloved God, all the earth is singing you, singing you, singing you. In the impermanent materials of soul,
most passionately desire and hated that which we most dearly love. Carrying your cross, carrying your cross, carrying your cross, carrying your cross, talking intimately with your disciples as their brother. Carrying your cross, teaching them, nourishing them as their master. Carrying your cross, cracking a joke, as you pause to wipe the sweat from your Oceans of love, I own. 
How marvelous was your creating From the thread of nothingness You wove this vast universe And this little earth And man, and man All because you did not know who you were All because you did not know who you were Absolutely nothing is seeming something contained within your everything. Out of absolutely nothing is seeming something contained within your everything. Your everything. Your everything. The long pain from the time you broke out of your imprisonment of stone and crept up age after age to man's state. Yourself. Articulated for self knowing your ear eager for your voice, your eye for sight of you. Thrusting upwards, spreading out gropingly toward your infinity. How feeble you were as were. How silently you glided through swamps, through the grass as serpent, seeking yourself. And as lizard scurried and stretched yourself in the sun. How you fish swam in, in the shallow, shallow waters, seeking yourself. Dive down deep in the ocean, scaled waterfalls, seeking yourself in the highest waters. Out of the jungle, trumpeting like the rising sun. Howling across frozen steps. Crying in fox cry like a child in distress in the night. Bull bellowed, bull staring into the sunset. Pouring the earth, longing. Proudly over 
plains, Lord of the world. Stealthily at night through silent forests, suddenly alive. And then stood up, stood up, beating your breast, unable to endure, not being mad, not being mad. But eventually you turn, you turn, you turn, and took your stand in the puzzle and seed of yourself, and became your own hero and fought your way out of the tangle of flesh and the drift of stars. And 
waited with vast patience the extent of our folly, of our little greeds and progress. Little greeds and progress. To other than As the moment of your glory drew near, the talk with your disciples died on your lips, and the swift glances fled from your eyes. Your brow was a sea of concrete in which no How the 